I am running a Kickstarter. If you play D&D, have a 3D printer, or both, check it out. That's all I'm going to say. On to the tutorial. Hello, this is Poor Nils with Ren Martak, and I'm going to show you my favorite add-on. As you look in the scene, you might see a little ZBrush export button here. That's because I'm using something called GoB. GoB is an add-on that allows you to work between Blender and ZBrush by importing and exporting different models and um, figures from one program to the next. It's by Jose Canseco, and you can go ahead and download it here. Later in the tutorial, I'll explain how to install this. Before I show you that, let me just show you how easy this is to use. I come up here, select the model I want, hit export, and... <laughs> now I got an X-Wing inside of ZBrush. How cool is that? Um, anything that you do to this model, you can also export back. So let's go ahead and just mess this up really. Here we go. Just like that. I'll even change the rotation of this. Something like that. And then if you go to where it says Go Z, you can export everything or you can just export visible. So I'm just going to export visible. And let's see what happens here. And you can see it's actually made a clone. So here's my original. I can go ahead and hide that. But here is the new model. It takes everything, the position, the rotation, everything. And so you can already imagine some of the uses that you might have for this, but I'm gonna go ahead and go into more depth of how I use this within my workflow. Um, so first we're gonna talk about how to install it, and then we're gonna talk about how to use it so you can skip accordingly. All right, let's get into it. We're gonna go ahead and install it. So the first thing you need is you have to have Blender open and you have to have ZBrush open like this. Now that you have both of those open, you go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and go ahead and hit Install. Find where you have this installed. And once you've found where that's installed, you go to the zip and you hit Install Add-on. So you go ahead and enable that like that. And then you need to hit Export. Doing this, we'll go ahead and find Oh, you hit export and you find ZBrush. I like to just go ahead, go down here, right click, go to ZBrush, right click again, properties, and then I can just basically copy and paste where ZBrush is at and load ZBrush. But then once you do that, you'll see that it will go ahead and import this into ZBrush. Now what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to turn off ZBrush and restart it. So we'll go ahead and do that right now. All right, so I have ZBrush loaded back up, and now you'll see right here, Go Z. If you click Visible, it'll export all the visible things. If you hit All, it'll export everything. So you can kind of mask and, and work around that, but it should work as long as you have in Blender the input port um, activated like such. Let's go ahead and try that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Visible. Go back to Blender. Let's hide this cube. And you can see that the dog is right there. Now, if you make any edits to this dog and you hit visible again, it'll keep the same naming structure and you'll see that it's just automatically updated like that. Any edits that I make in here, if I hit export, it'll go back to ZBrush like that. So there you go. That's how you install Go B basically the equivalent of GoZ. Here I have a dinosaur inside of ZBrush without any fangs, teeth, or claws. I guess fangs and teeth are the same thing. <laughs> Anyways, I want to basically box model these different attributes inside of Blender. You can do it inside of ZBrush, but it's a little wonky trying to get it positioned exactly right and getting it in the same size that you want and everything else. So I find that box modeling is gonna be the best method. So I can just take this and go ahead and export this into Blender. Now this is 173, uh, uh, 1.73 million polygons. So what I like to do sometimes is just take this mesh, um, go ahead and select that, duplicate it, and then just dynamesh it really low, turn off project, because all I basically need is a rough shape like that. Now it can export and import into Blender really fast. So let's go ahead and do that. Go ahead and click Visible. And there we go. We've got this. 
Now we can go ahead and box model with inside of Blender and position the teeth and the claws and the fangs where we want it. So I'll just show you that really quick. So Blender's, one of Blender's biggest strengths is its box modeling. As I do this, I can make the claws, the fangs. I'm not really gonna do this right now because I already have it done, but basically just showing you how I'd take a cylinder, I could subdivide this thing, I could move it the way I want, and you get access to all of the tools like symmetra, uh, symmetry and mirror modifiers and pretty much anything you want. And so it's really powerful. Yeah, I could do this in ZBrush, but I find box modeling and blocking out shapes inside of Blender is way better for my workflow, so that's what I do. So when you get something you like, you can go ahead and import that into ZBrush by just hitting the, selecting the thing you want and then hitting export. Now, we can see just how bad this looks, obviously. I'm not trying to go for, for something that's good looking, but after you get what you want, you could get something that looks, here, let me try and find it. And here I have the claws and the, and the toes. I guess those are also claws and the teeth. I made this all with inside of Blender and just exported it to ZBrush or imported it into ZBrush, depending on how you look at that, whatever. And so you, there you go. Now I can go ahead and start to add more and more detail to this. And here I have a extremely high poly um, mesh of the creature. And this is where it gets really cool. I can take this and I can decimate it and then import it into Blender again by hitting the visible. And I can actually rig this thing. So I'll show you what I mean. Here I have the decimated model, which is really quite cool, right? And I've had it rigged with a, an armature. And so now what I can do is I can go ahead and move this thing any way I want. And I can start to pose my, my my sculpt any way I want to, right? So I've already gotten a couple poses made. So here's one of the dinosaur roaring. Here's one of the dinosaur running towards something. And then here is a smaller version. I can scale that down. Here is a smaller version of the dinosaur that's kind of like looking off to the side. I can then take this, select my model, and hit export again. And I now have it back inside of ZBrush posed with all of the, the symmet uh, symmetrical details and things like that. And if I want, I could go ahead and Dynamesh this. I could hit project and then I could add more details. I could put like battle damage or <laughs> authentic battle damage. I, I can do things like that within ZBrush as well. So this is kind of my workflow that I do and that's it. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. As always, subscribe, thumbs up, comment below, things of that really helps this channel get noticed. Um, for the next couple of weeks, as the Kickstarter is running, I will try my very best to do a weekly or bi-weekly tutorial. And after, the and after the Kickstarter is finished out, I will most likely go into a bi-weekly tutorial release cycle. I think I can sustain that. Um, if you are, like I said at the beginning, if you're interested in D&D, Pathfinder, or 3D printing, my Kickstarter is basically geared towards you, and I'd encourage you to go and check that out. If you're not interested in any of those things, don't worry about it. Or you could go and support it by just throwing a dollar or two just to, you know, help me out. Awesome. I hope that you have a great day. See you around. Bye.